the Lingmo OS mystery and revealing its confusing identity. Is Lingmo OS a genuine Linux distribution, a rebranded knockoff, or something else entirely? We are diving deep into the confusing identity of Lingmo OS, a system that has everyone scratching their heads. You might think you know Linux, but Lingmo OS is about to challenge everything you believe. Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today, we are tackling one of the more intriguing puzzles in the Linux world, the Lingmo OS. If you have stumbled across the distro online, you might have wondered what it's all about. Its sleek looks, its vogue origins, and why it feels both familiar and mysterious. Stick around as we peel back the layers and get to the bottom of it. If you enjoy deep dives like this, hit that like button and subscribe for more Linux explorations. Now, the Phantom OS, a Lingmo introduction. Is Lingmo OS a ghost in the machine or something more? Let's start with the basics. Lingmo OS presents itself as an elegant, modern Linux distribution built on the stable foundation of Debian Neo Linux. It first popped up in the online discussion around early 2024, when its official website launching around that time, showcasing a polished desktop environment called Lingmo Desktop Environment. At first glance, it looks like a lightweight OS designed for users who want a beautiful interface without the bloat. Think clean lines, Intuitive tools, and a vibe that's suspicious reminiscent of macOS. But here is where the mystery kicks in. Its identity feels inclusive because it doesn't shout out about its backstory. Early mentions on forums and GitHub hinted at connections to other projects, leaving many to question if it's truly original or just a clever rebrand. We'll dig deeper, but for now, know that Lingmo OS has been gaining traction through YouTube reviews and community posts, positioning itself as a fresh alternative in the crowded Linux ecosystem. Now, beneath the surface, decoding Lingmo's origin. To understand Lingmo OS, we need to trace its roots. From what we have uncovered, Lingmo OS emerged as a spiritual successor to Cutefish OS a short-lived Linux project that aimed to create a simple, aesthetically pleasing desktop, but was discontinued in late 2022. Cutefish was known for its Qt-based desktop environment, which prioritized elegance and ease of use. Lingmo OS essentially picked up where Cutefish left off, forking and redeveloping the code under a new name. Hence the GitHub description calling it a cute fish regression in another form. Development seems to be led by a small team, primarily based in China, with contributions from open source enthusiasts. The project GitHub organization, active since around 2023, hosts over 90 repositories, covering everything from the core system to the file manager and UI components. Key contributors are acknowledged, including individuals like Matt and Chan for the naming and others for backend support. Initial announcements came via social media and SourceForge, with the first stable release, version 2.0, dropping in 2024, followed by the major 3.0 update in mid-2025. As for its unique features, Lingmo boosts a redesigned global menu that saves screen space, optimized visual effects for smoother performance, and built-in tools like a software store and system settings that make it beginner-friendly. But are these truly innovative? Many are evolutions of Cutefish ideas, blended with Debian's rock-solid base. Early community reactions were mixed. Some praised its lightweight nature and macOS-like polish on low-end hardware, while others expressed skepticism about its Chinese origins and potential similarities to other distros like Deepin. Reddit threads 
from 2024 show users calling it a new cute fish and reporting positive experience after months of use. But initial buzz was tampered by questions about long-term support. Now, let's talk about the great Linux identity crisis. So where does Lingmo OS fit in the vast Linux landscape? It's not a heavyweight like Ubuntu or Fedora, nor a minimalist like Arts. Instead, it slots in as a mid-tier user-focused distro, similar to Linux Mint or Zorin OS, but with a stronger emphasis on aesthetics. Built on Debian 12 Bookworm, it inherits stability and a massive software repository, supporting thousands of apps via APT. The big debate, is it a new OS or just a modified Linux distro? Lingmo claims to be a full-fledged operating system with its custom Lingmo UI desktop. But under the hood, it's undeniably a Debian derivative. It's macOS inspired design, complete with a centered dock, blurred FX, and global menus, has led some to label it a clone. But it's more of an homage optimized for efficiency on hardware as low as 2GB RAM and dual core processors. So, who is it really for? The target audience appears to be a newcomers to Linux who want a familiar, polished experience without the learning curve of more technical distros. It's great for everyday tasks like browsing, office work, and media consumption, especially on older machines where it runs lightweight and snappy. Reviews from 2025 highlight its spend on low-end hardware, making it appealing to budget-conscious users or those transitioning from macOS or Windows. However, power users might find it lacking in advanced customization compared to KDE or GNOME-based options. Now, the smoke and mirrors, unanswered questions. Despite its charms, Lingmo OS raises some valid concerns. Development transparency is decent but not exceptional. The GitHub repos are public and there is a wiki for getting started. But detailed roadmaps or contributor guidelines are sparse. Communication from the creator happens mostly via X, which is formerly Twitter. Announcements and chain log posts with the official account Lingmo OS, sharing updates like the recent 3.0.5 release on October 19th, 2025, which fixed bugs in user management and window title bar. For potential users, this ambiguity means weighing risk. Will support continue? Is there spyware? Given its Chinese origins, community checks and reviews haven't flagged major issues. It's open source, so code is auditable. But the lack of a large vocal community compared to Ubuntu could mean slower bug fixes. Tech forums highlight red flags, like incomplete internalization in early versions and occasionally stability hiccups. But overall, it's seen as a solid, if niche, option. If you are privacy conscious, stick to well vetted distros, but Lingmo doesn't appear malicious based on available info. Now, Lingmo's future, a lingering enigma. Looking ahead, why does Lingmo OS exist in this nebulous state? It could be an earnest attempt to revive Cutefish vision, filling a gap for macOS-like Linux experience amid growing interest in lightweight distros. Or perhaps it's a passion project from developers aiming to challenge bigger players like Deepin. Whatever the reason, projects like this enrich the open source ecosystem by encouraging innovation in UI design and accessibility even if they spark debates. Now, the impact. Ambitious distros can inspire folks and improvements, but also dilute focus if they fizzle out. As of now, Lingmo is active with regular updates and growing YouTube coverage. What are your theories on Lingmo OS? Have you tried it? Drop your thoughts in the comments. Maybe it's the next big thing or just a pretty face. Thanks for watching. If this cleared up the mystery for you, 
शेयर द वीडियो एंड लेट्स डिस्कस मोर लिनक्स एंड एक मास इन द नेक्स्ट वन सी यू सोन पीस आउट